Good morning. Welcome sa press briefing ni Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Rocky. How are you? Fine, thank you, sir. Yeah. I noticed that um, Hello, sir. <laughs> your makeup is uh, <laughs> improving and improving. Uh, uh, well, to no, no, no. <laughs> you know, as I said, Rocky and I are uh, siblings from different mothers <laughs> because, of, because of our moles. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Uh, it's a fine Tuesday morning. I hope you I hope you were able to write a lot of news articles for today because yesterday I think you were uh, bombarded with so many stories. Okay, so we are in another exciting uh, <laughs> press brief here inside Malacanang. We have a new resource person with us. It's our first time, I think, sir. First time in uh, the briefing room. Secretary Pernia is a professor emeritus of economics at the University of the Philippines and uh, lead economist at the Asian Development Bank. Dr. Pernia was a visiting research fellow at the East-West Center Resource Systems Institute in Honolulu and was regional advisor on population and employment policy for the Asia and the Pacific with the International Labor Organization. The outstanding Boholano is once, was once an outstanding young scientist from the National Academy of Science and Technology, Balik Scientist Awardee of the Department of Science and Technology and currently ranked seventh among the 250 scientists in the Philippines, according to Google Scholar Citations public profiles. As one of the members of the President's economic team, Secretary Pernia's areas of expertise on economic growth and poverty reduction, population and development augur well to the thrust of the Duterte administration to make socioeconomic growth and development self-sustaining and inclusive for all Filipinos. Ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps, let us Please give a warm welcome to one of the President's Economic Managers, Social Economic Planning Secretary, and Director General of the National Economic and Development Authority, Dr. Ernesto M. Pernia. Uh, good morning. Uh, co-workers toward uh, inclusive and self-sustaining economic growth over the next uh, six years at least. And of course, hopefully beyond. Secretary, Press Secretary Martin Andanar, my, we come from the same region almost. Uh, Secretary Ernie Abelia, my Tukayo, uh, good morning, uh, everyone, uh, everyone in the media. So, I am pleased for this opportunity to report on the accomplishments of our agency, the National Economic and Development Authority, over the first 50 days under the administration of President Rodrigo R. Duterte. Guided by the ten to st guided by the zero to ten point agenda of the president, we are carrying on with the macroeconomic policies of the previous administration, but ramping up infrastructure spending promoting regional and rural development, and investing heavily in human capital development, which includes uh, health and education, and nutrition. 
In the first 50 days of this administration, I can say that we are on the right track and, uh, and at a faster pace to make sure that we achieve our goals. Allow me to just highlight a number of important areas, namely accelerating infrastructure development projects, <coughs> revisiting agricultural and rural development policies and innovations in development planning. First, we have moved quickly to implement reforms to accelerate infrastructure development, which has been rather slow in the previous administration. The, invest the Investment Coordination Committee, or the ICC, has so far approved 10 projects already just last August 2nd, with a total of 320 billion pesos in project costs. The NEDA board, chaired by the president, will take up these projects for approval in September, and thereafter implementation by the concerned agencies. The NEDA board approval is the last stage of the hurdle uh, for projects. The list in, the, this list includes, among others, projects in rural development, including irrigation, farm irrigation, farm to market roads, even school buildings in uh, depressed areas, regional hospitals, airport modernization, Flood management, the North-South Railway South Line project, and the Metro Manila Rapid Transit bu Bus Rapid Transit project on EDSA, among others. Likewise, NEDA, through the Infrastructure Committee or Infracom, has directed prioritizing the completion of the Mindanao Railway Project's initial phase. The project will be implemented in 2017, once approved by the NEDA board within the year. The, inf the Infracom has also specified measures to urgently address the Metro Manila traffic crisis and decongest the city. One such measure is the immediate implementation of the Bonifacio Global City Ortigas Link Bridge, which is expected to divert 25% of the EDSA traffic. Another is the early resolution of the common station for the MRT3, LRT1, and MRT7 which has been uh, stymied by controversies in the previous administration. The Department of Public Works and Highways will hand the final configuration of the station to the DOTR, or Department of Transportation. And uh, likewise, the Infracom has urged the use of the Patangas and Subic ports to, to decongest the Manila ports. The Infracom has also identified measures to ad address institutional, legal, and policy issues in relation to infrastructure programs. Part of the legislative agenda to be submitted to the LEDAC, or the Legislative Executive Development and uh, Advisory Council, well, uh, this has not been this has been dormant in the previous administration. So, we, we are uh, revitalizing and uh, getting that uh, active again. To con uh, this uh, the LEDAC is uh, scheduled to convene in September or October, and uh, the following will be sub submitted to the LEDAC: the creation of an apex or super body for water resources, for the water resources sector. Proposed to be 
the Water Resources Department or authority. Secondly, the creation of an independent economic and financial regulator for, wa for the water sector. Number three, the national transport policy, which ought to coordinate the uh, different transport projects uh, so that uh, the movement, the connectivity across uh, regions and across provinces will be more systematic. Amendments, number four, amendments to the Build, Operate, Transfer, or the BOT law, and it's IRR. This has to do with uh, uh, hurdling the right-of-way problems, uh, procurement, and uh, other implementation problems that uh, tend to stymie the uh, rapid processing of projects and implementation of projects. Uh, five, amendments to the Electric Power Industry Reform Act, or the EPIRA, and uh, amendments to the Water Code of the Philippines. Another important reform to accelerate infrastructure development is the streamlining of processes of, for investment programming. NEDA has recently launched an online, online database system and streamline the project approval process. In line with the updating of the core investment program, the investment, the public investment program online system, or PIPOL, P-I-P-O-L, was launched to allow agencies to submit <coughs> automatically online their data, their data entries, updates, and reports on their priority programs and projects. For the ICC, the Investment Coordination Committee, uh, for the ICC approval and, ap and appraisal process, NEDA has raised uh, the project cost, the project cost floor, from one billion to five billion, meaning that uh, projects below five billion can uh, go faster. It doesn't have to go through the, the entire uh, process of hurdling the ICC and the uh, NEDA board. And, uh, okay, uh, as well as updated the social discount rate, which is uh, some kind of uh, criterion that would decide whether a project is acceptable or not. We have re updated the social discount rate from 15%, which is pretty high by today's uh, interest uh, regime interest rate regime to 10%. So that should also speed up uh, project approval. As well, other reform initiatives on the process are currently proposed to fast track appraisal and approval process while still ensuring quality of infrastructure projects. Moreover, we are revisiting policies on agriculture and rural development, which have lagged behind amid consistent economic growth. NEDA has continued to monitor the status of previous programs on rice and the effects of El Nino to make sure that there will be no, shortage, no shortages of food or so that there will be no spikes in the price of rice which tend to uh, impact uh, heavily on the poor. And, you know, price hikes tend to increase our poverty, poverty incidence. We have been monitoring rice production and consumption to determine whether and when to import, given risks of La Nina and other weather disturbances. Finally, I am pleased to share with you the NEDA, that the NEDA Innovation uh, I'm pleased to share with you NEDA's innovation in planning through the ambition Natin 2040, the long-term vision of the Philippines. This continues to gain traction since the launch of this project in March 2016, 
we have been receiving very positive feedback and support from various stakeholders to whom we have reached out through numerous briefings, presentations, and consultations. Apart from government, international development partners and, soci and civil, so civil society and the private sector, we have been engaging the youth through extensive use of social media and other forms of new media. Through, through Facebook alone, for example, we have already reached 14.3 million users in only a matter of four months. In face-to-face -face interactions, the support has been overwhelming, and we are pleased that our aim to make ambition nothing. 2040, a basis for unity among Filipinos is being achieved. Also important is the support we're getting to make this long-term vision an anchor for development planning across administrations, whereby a plan is built on the previous plan of the previous administration, thereby ensuring sustain sustainability of development initiatives with long-term goals in mind, and thus safeguarding against drawbacks of having plans bound by the terms of, po of political administrations. To further cement the long-term vision in the country's development priorities, NEDA has recently submitted a draft executive order adopting the long-term vision as a guide in crafting the next Philippine Development Plan. The PDP 2017-2022 framework is already taking shape, taking into account the zero to 10 uh, socioeconomic agenda of the Duterte administration and the long-term vision. The planning process is underway with the drafting of the framework, outline and listing of planning committees and subcommittees for this uh, PDP 2017-2022. The planning guidelines for the PDP formulation are also already drafted and will inform agencies on the priority, priority areas in each sector that they will work on. Furthermore, we will continue the efforts <coughs> of strongly linking the planning <coughs> and budgeting process to ensure the sustainability of priority programs and projects. We have been consulting with different stakeholders to disseminate the proposed framework for PDP 2017-2022 and to obtain inputs for the plan. The consultations ensure that there'll be inputs coming from a broad cross-section of society and the citizenry. We're also being, uh, we have also been presenting the platform of government as well as our long-term vision for the country in international fora, like the UN and APEC meetings. Concerning APEC, APEC Asia Pacific Economic Forum, in particular, we are making sure that priorities we have identified during our hosting last year are being followed through. In addition, we are introducing our new priorities of balancing growth opportunities across regions, sectors, and socioeconomic classes in the APEC agenda. These are just some, some of what we have done meaningfully in just the first 50 days in, uh, of, of in NEDA under the Duterte administration. We have hit the ground running and we intend to do much more in collaborating with other agencies, development partners, and key stake, stake, stakeholders. We trust that in the next 50 days, we can mobilize more people and resources to accomplish even more and continue improving our processes that will benefit the Filipino people, especially the poor and those left behind. Maraming salamat at magandang umaga sa inyo muli. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Pernia. Welcome lang po natin sa briefing room si Peng Alinya ng Davao City PBS Radio ng Bayan. Welcome dito. First question will come from Raymond Tinasa, Bombo Radio. Microphone, please. Just two quick points. Uh, so on the matter of policy, you've mentioned 
uh, on your opening statement that you are continuing the macroeconomic policies of the previous administration and yet you are wrapping it up. Sir, can you uh, elaborate or uh, discuss further on what do you mean actually by elaboration of these okay, uh, policies? Uh, well, that's why I'm, uh, I'm wearing a yellow shirt because we are continuing the... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, I, uh, w what we really mean is that uh, we, we uh, actually credit the uh, previous administration for sound... Uh, fiscal and monetary policy, which uh, has, uh, you know, maintained our strong economic, macroeconomic fundamentals. And that is why uh, during the previous administration, uh, the economy has uh, earned uh, upgrading by these uh, credit, credit rating agencies. But the point is that, uh, well, I think the focus of the previous government was too much on the macroeconomy. What we intend to do is to focus now on the subnational economies, sub subnational regional economies, including rural areas and agriculture, so in order to disperse development away from the mega urban industrial region comprising Metro Manila, Calabarzon, and Central Luzon. As you know, these three regions alone account for two-thirds of GDP. And the 14 other regions have to, de have, have to be content with the one-third of GDP. So you can imagine the inequality, the massive inequality, which also explains, which underlies the massive poverty we have in this country, which has been a difficult nut to crack. Sir, last point. So yes. good you mentioned that. So we're ramping in, uh, infrastructure investment in the other regions without, of course, uh, stifling needed infrastructure projects in Metro Manila. Sir, uh, yeah, good yes. thing you mentioned the agriculture sector, which is very much lagging behind for years, especially those in the rural areas, the, far the poor small farmers. Sir, what are exactly in the pipeline to modernize the agriculture, especially uh, those in the rural areas? I understand majority uh, of the farmers in the provinces are still using the traditional method, are still using caravan to plow their fields. That's right. No, I, I think uh, one, of the, uh, one of the measures we are trying to uh, in, uh, introduce in, uh, in agriculture or in, in rural areas is to consolidate. Uh, you know, uh, our land reform, our agrarian reform has uh, resulted in small pieces of plots which are not economically productive. I mean, they are not of uh, scale, uh, uh, economic scale that uh, would make farm productivity produ uh, you know, high enough to produce uh, enough rice or enough uh, other food uh, uh, crops. So we are, so land administration is going to be clarified and improved so that titling will be will be done on untitled lots so that they'll be easier to consolidate for those who want to sell their uh, small plots of farm can sell so that there'll be some consolidation. So there'll be investors coming there and therefore you know, uh, making uh, the farm uh, enterprise more productive and more modern with uh, mo modern farm implements not carabaos, but me mechanization as well. And uh, better irrigation, whether large-scale irrigation or smaller uh, irrigation systems that uh, would uh, benefit groups of uh, farms. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Raymond. JP Bencito. Hey, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Sir? Um, yes. Sir, um, in the previous administration, it has been a big problem, sir, that the um, private partner, private public partnerships, sir, the part um, were not continued well. Um, some projects were not, um, despite um, being implemented, it's not in the pipeline. It's not being implemented, um, sir. What are the um, mechanisms that the new administration will do to prevent these backlogs, some sort of and um, how will the government address this um, backlogs that 
our being in the previous administration. We, we, yeah, we're speeding up the processing of uh, PPP projects. In fact, uh, some of the 10 uh, projects that the ICC, Investment Coordinating Committee, approved just last uh, August 2nd are PPP, PPP projects that uh, you know got stalled in the previous administration. Sir, we just clear out if pwede po. Yung numbers lang, sir, 10 yung na stall from the previous administration? Hindi naman 10. I think uh, there, because uh, among the 10, there are some new ones. Like the, uh, you know, Mindanao Railway and, uh, you know. Sir, but uh, ma many, I think most of the 10 were just uh, sitting idly uh, in the list and in the new and the previous administration. Sir, can we just know what are the PPP projects that the new administration will pursue? Well, uh, those I, I mentioned, as well as the prison, the prison uh, mod modern u large prison or jail to be uh, uh, cited or to be uh, located in Fort Magsaysay, uh, which should decongest our overcrowded uh, jails and prisons. So that's one. That, that uh, by the way, alone co cost $50 billion. A little over $50 billion. Uh, sorry, not dollars. Pesos. Pesos. And uh, that's, uh, well, Justice Secretary uh, Aguirre <laughs> is uh, very passionate about getting that started already. And that also came from the previous list list of the previous government. Sir, last na lang po. Um, will the gov um, Metro Manila subway will push through under the new administration? Ah, yes. Yeah, the Metro Manila subway, we just need to choose which of three possible alignments uh, should uh, be, you know, should be implemented. And uh, JICA is uh, keen in uh, uh, you know, uh, partnering or uh, financing that project. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, JP. Last two questions from uh, Joseph Morong and Ted Tuvera. Sir, can you bang isa? Sure, sure, sure. I mean, uh, you know, I have a little more time now because I have to wait for another meeting <laughs> at 2 o'clock here. Okay. In Joseph Morong, GMA7. Sir, based on your presentation, Kanina, there are at least, correct me if I'm wrong, um, at least four projects that are aimed to uh, solve the Metro Manila traffic. Yes. Tama ba, sir, yung Metro Manila bus transit, uh, BGC, a common station, and then there's another one, this North-South Railway. These are new projects or ito yung mga nastol, no? Uh, North-South, uh, they, they were started in the previous administration. Yes, sir. Yeah, Just a little more background, sir. Can you, exp uh, can you expand on the BGC Ortigas Road Link? Well, that is uh, well. Uh, that is an altern an additional bridge yes. to what we have now on the east side of uh, Metro Manila. There's a bridge there, C5, no. Uh, so we need another one there to you know to add uh, road uh, road space for those uh, traveling uh, between uh, you know between the two two seg uh, two parts of the passing the two uh, parts of metro manila uh, that is cut by the pasig river pasig river yeah when do you expect to uh, start the uh, that, that is uh, that's already you know in an advanced stage and uh, we just need to remind uh, secretary to that uh, how in that, that he said uh, he, he himself said that it's a very urgent project. And by the way, that's also needed because we need to retrofit to reinforce Guadalupe Bridge. And so that when uh, Guadalupe re uh, work on Guadalupe re Bridge is uh, going to, uh, to start, then uh, I think only one lane, I mean only, only the north or the south uh, going part of the bridge will be will be used the other one will be closed so we we really need that uh, that uh, additional bridge yes sir, sir just on taxes 
So, mm-hmm. may proposals ang DOF for uh, ano ba to? lifting of the VAT. I think, um, would you identify the services and uh, products that will be affected? Uh, there's a long list of uh, exempted, many exempted items mm-hmm. exempted from the VAT. Uh, they'll all be lifted or be removed from the list, and uh, the only ones uh, that will remain would have to do with the food, health, uh, m- food, medicine, no, no, f- raw food. Raw food. Uh, not, not the restaurant type food, but the raw food, home cooked food, uh, medicine, and uh, education. So, health, education, and uh, 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 food, r- yeah, and you know, okay. home cooked type food or the, the thing that you buy in the wet market and then cook Thank at you. home. Yeah. Thank you, Joseph. Ted, sir, the three more questions from Ted De Vera, then Ace, and last, Laila Salaveria. Sir, follow up lang po muna dun, sir, sa PPP. Do you consider, sir, na PPP yung one billion na donation ng San Miguel, sir? One billion? Donation po ng San Miguel Corporation. <coughs> uh, for the rehab. Do you consider that the PPP? Uh, w- that is not, uh, well, th- that's not, that is uh, just a new volunteer type uh, measure. It's not really, you know, it's not really, uh, you know, a, a project per se yet. That would have to be, uh, the project would have to be conceptualized and formulated properly. But I- that can be a contribution to the uh, financing of that project. Sir, and another topic, sir. Labor groups and other sectors usually say that GDP growth is not uh, felt by those in the bottom part of the society. Mm. How do you suggest or intend to translate such growth to ordinary people? Uh, is it possible, say, to increase the minimum wage of workers, sir? No, minimum wage uh, increases uh, tend to be counterproductive, actually. Because then, instead of two earning members of the family, maybe only one will uh, survive the you know the the hiring and the firing of uh, companies the laying off uh, uh, the, the better thing is always to you know to uh, generate more jobs and uh, well the the thrust of the Duterte administration is uh, regional and rural development and development outside Metro Manila, the Metro Manila mega urban industrial region, so that uh, because poverty is really more in the in the regions outside this mega urban re- regional re- re- mega urban region, but uh, then uh, it's 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 more prevalent. Poverty is more prevalent in regions uh, of Mindanao, in the regions of Mindanao and Visayas and uh, northern, uh, the rest of Luzon. So the, 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 that uh, policy thrust, that strategy, should uh, address uh, the puzzle why high economic growth is not trickling down. And also, uh, th- there'll be more investment in education and healthcare, ca- human capital investment and healthcare in the regions, not, in, not here. So those are the things, uh, those are the, among the measures needed. Sir, last question from my part. Sir, what impression do you think is brought about by the killings caused by the administration's uh, war on drugs to foreign investors? Well, uh, we need to counter the negative, uh, the negative, you know, effect, the negative perception uh, for those uh, observing what's happening here from afar, because usually when you're uh, when you are from a distant, then you see the thing is uh, really, you know, more serious than what it really is, because it, it's really localized. And also, uh, I, uh, the press secretary and the uh, presidential spokesperson, they're both working on countering this uh, negative. Uh, perception uh, you know the thing to do is uh, th- the, the problem is the only ones interviewed by media are those who have been whose uh, husband or uh, child has uh, has been killed no 
or have been killed, uh, we should also interview, we should also try to get the view of uh, others who approve of what's happening and see it as really, uh, see it as, uh, you know, maybe a necessary evil uh, that needs to be, that, that ha has to happen in the pursuit of a greater good. So I, I put it that way and, uh, you know, I, I think uh, foreigners have to be informed that uh, if they come here and they behave, they don't do anything, uh, you know, any, they don't uh, do any misdeed, then they're safe. In fact, uh, the crime rate has gone down uh, substantially because of this uh, fight against, against the drug menace. So uh, th these are the kinds of things that we need to do to counter the you know, perception so uh, from afar. So sir, the follow up, do you see uh, the effect on of the war on drugs as making the country a safer place for investors or a dangerous place? Well, definitely. It's uh, uh, the number zero in the zero to 10 point agenda is uh, peace and order. And uh, included in that is the fight against criminality and drugs and smuggling and tax evasion and uh, other illegal activities. And uh, if, if we have peace and order, which is the bedrock of the 10 points, the foundation of the 10 points, then uh, investment, the investment climate will definitely uh, substantially improve. And uh, many will be rushing to the Philippines to invest. Yes. Okay, thank you, Ted. Uh, Laila Salaveria, then Ace. Last na yun or may Tina? Um, sir, just to clarify, uh, sure. is, there, is your timeline for the tra traffic projects dependent on the president getting emergency powers? Uh, the, the emergency powers would help. And uh, I understand uh, they are forthcoming. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of time. Uh, definitely because the procurement problem, the bidding, the right of way, and many other roadblocks uh, tend to, you know, stymie efforts to improve uh, infrastructure. Uh, does yeah. it mean uh, if the emergency powers come, will we be adjusting the expected completion date of the projects? Uh, yeah, especially, yeah, those th having to do with uh, addressing the traffic crisis. Mm -hmm. Yes, like the, the bridge thing. And uh, okay, and but the other thing is that uh, even without the emergency power, we're going to uh, work on uh, we're, we're going to make sure that work on major infrastructure projects uh, will be round the clock. Tw uh, so 24-7, no let up. So there will be three shifts. And that shouldn't be a problem because we have a uh, high unemployment rate. So it's very logical. It's going to be good for improving the, imp uh, the employment uh, concern and also good for finishing projects uh, faster. So it, it will be 24-7. At last. Um, are Both uh, DOTC and DOTR and DPWAs have already uh, adopted that policy, yes. Have you g received an assurance on when the emergency powers are forthcoming or will you take it up with the LEDAC pag if it LEDAC. hasn't been given yet? Well, if it's not yet, uh, if it's not yet here, if it's not yet approved by by the uh, by the time the letter convenes, then we are certainly going to take it up. Yeah. In fact, I have I've also suggested that perhaps uh, we should include in a some kind of an informal uh, gathering caucus among the uh, legislative, executive, and judiciary some informal conversation, so that uh, we you know we draw in the justices and the, uh, well especially the Supreme Court, so they will be, they will understand why is it, why, why uh, is our judicial system a problem, a stumbling block in our development? The TROs and you know, the, this, you know, this thing. So they have to, they can argue among themselves, the three branches of government, but they should be one in acting toward a, our common goal. 
And I think uh, President Rodrigo Duterte is the kind of president who can probably pull them together, the three branches of government. Okay, thank you, sir. Last three final questions from Ace, no, after Marlon and Tina. Sec, you mentioned about your uh, legislative wish list. Mm. Uh, can you tell us why you're proposing those measures? Uh, because they are needed. Uh, wha what what effect would they have? Well, we need a you know we need a water resources authority because we are not really secure in terms of our water needs. You know, there are many areas that are waterless. We don't uh, appreciate the problem because we are we're watered every day, <laughs> but <laughs> but there are many areas that are unwatered, completely unwatered. They have to buy at expensive uh, prices, no, at high prices. Okay. okay uh, regarding your idea of uh, having an informal talk between the judiciary, executive, and legislature, uh, what's the progress on this? Well, uh, no, I, I have, I have uh, you know, I've been uh, uh, thinking out loud <laughs> mainly, and I've suggested that uh, in some fora that I had, uh, you know, I had businessmen there, but I haven't really uh, suggested that to the president. Maybe spokesperson uh, Ernie Abelia, my Tukayo, can do it <laughs> well for the president. Yeah, I mean, you know, just uh, you know, just an informal, friendly conversation. Not the Ledak type because Ledak is too formal, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. You know. Yeah. So, I think that's done. Then that's done in other countries. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Ace Marlon and Tina na lang for Secretary Perry and other na lang siguro questions. So okay. uh, I was supposed to ask about the Sangli mm. uh, Point Airport, but I was drawn to your statement a while ago that. The drug killings m could be a necessary evil. Um, the wha what? Yung binanggit nyo po, uh, you said that the drug killings could be a necessary evil. Yeah, something uh, like is that. Yeah. Uh, I Isn't that dangerous, sir, coming uh, from a be, I presidential I don't know if that's a correct uh, theolo theological statement. Uh, yes. Huh? Let it pass. Let it pass. Yeah, okay. Yes, go ahead. It isn't that dangerous, sir, coming from uh, presidential advice to be even considering that? Which one? When you said that killings could be uh, unnecessary. Uh, sorry. No, it's it's a it's a byproduct of uh, you know something. I mean, it's a it's a self defense thing, right? Uh, self defense is uh, legitimate, isn't it? When you are attacked, uh, when you try to uh, when law enforcers uh, try to you know do something and uh, the criminal resists and uh, is armed and uh, is likely to uh, get you know get first i mean uh, draw his gun first faster than uh, draw his gun faster than the police then you have to do something so from an economist from the point of view of an economist does it do some good to the society if it the uh, government would it's get better not, not, uh, It's better that there, there are no killings, of course. It's better that there are no killings. And also we have to realize that our justice system is dysfunctional. I think, I think that should also be uh, made uh, known. We have to, yeah, people know that our justice system, this justice system is dysfunctional. And so the justices, the Supreme Court should know that. They have to shape up before we can really, you know, follow due process. Okay, thank you. Sir, Jaika, sir, Jaika has su suggests the suggested the construction of an airport in Sangli Point. And it was discussed well, uh, there, there are many, there are many Proposal. proponents, pro there are many proposals, many proponents, and uh, it's still up in the air. Is it viable? Well, it is. Uh, well, it can it can be for uh, general aviation, but then you cannot use Naia and uh, Sangli at the same time because the airspace is going to be limited. And, uh, you know, meaning that if uh, a plane lands or takes off from Naia, Na Sangli would have to wait, you know, for clearance. So it, it's, uh, it's going to be, it's not going to be 
uh, good uh, arrangement. So for general aviation, but then spending uh, so much for general aviation is, you know, it's probably not good. So I think, uh, you know, the, so it's up in the air. But I better say that it's up in the air. Nothing, nothing uh, definite about it. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Marlon. Thank you, Secretary Bernia. And thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Secretary Abeli, I think we have a meeting. Can you accommodate uh, more questions, Secretary Abeli? For Secretary Abeli, two more questions. Secretary Pernia, maraming salamat po. Okay. Secretary Abelia will accommodate. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for questions. You know, this opportunity. Kasi sure. meron sila meeting. Secretary yeah. Abelia, sino mag, ano, first question? Uh, Tina Men. Tina Mendoza. Tina Mendoza, ma'am. Mendoza, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Any comment on the latest statement of the U.S. State Department? that it is deeply concerned that the statistics of drug-related killings have reached to 1,500 already, as uh, testified by Chief PNP Bato de la Rosa yesterday at the Senate. Uh, so what is your question? What's your comment on that? And second, uh, they described the president as a plain-speaking politician. Nonetheless, uh, they also uh, they remain committed with the bilateral relationship uh, uh, between the two countries. Based on your statement that you just quoted, I think that's a very significant development, right? That in spite of the fact that the president is plain speaking, the relationship continues. Nonetheless, they also express deep concerns about the... We are addressing it from our side. As you can very well see, for example, the uh, uh, PNP chief De La Rosa is already facing uh, the Senate regarding that. And I think he has also, uh, also made references to the fact that whatever incidents that, have been, that are of serious concern are already being addressed. Thank you, Thank Tina you. Mendez. Last question na talaga kay Secretary Abelia. Ro we can accommodate two. Sige, oh, okay, we'll accommodate two more two. questions. All right, all right, okay. uh, Rose Cos and then Joseph Morong. Um, kuni lang po namin yung comment. May mga lawmakers po na nagsasabi na hindi po dumaan sa due process yun pong pagtatanggal ng mga appointees dahil po yung mga report